Hello, my name is Lisa Roger from Otimo, and I want to welcome you to the CIO podcast. On this show, we seek to share insights and experiences from the world's leading CIOs and transformation agents. So tune in if you're a CIO or an entrepreneur looking for inspiration. Welcome. All right. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of a podcast with CIO Lisa Roger. And I'm here with the esteemed Judith Abshago. Welcome, Judith. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you, Lisa. I am very honored. Well, let me tell you guys a little bit about Judith because she's a rock star. Um, She is an accomplished executive with over 25 years of leadership experience in IT uh, with an emphasis on process improvement and, and transformation, which is our topic this year. Judith currently serves as the chief digital officer for Amtrak, where she's driving multi-year enterprise-wide digital transformation. She leads a service-oriented team that partners with the business to provide digital and process transfer, transformation solutions and supports cr- critical business applications, strategic projects, and initiatives. Prior to Amtrak, Judith was the vice president and CIO uh, for U.S. Silica and other science companies like Sigma Aldridge. Um, she has spent several years as a consultant also with PricewaterhouseCoopers and ePresence. Um, what you what you might know already because it was all over the place. Judith has won a ton of awards, so I just have to tell you a f- about a few of them because she's a rock star. She has she's like the only two time recipient I know of a capital CIO Orby. Uh, she won it in uh, just recently in 2023 and in 2018. She also won HMG's Global Leadership Institute Award in 2022 and 2023. You've had a role during 2022 through 2023. Um, She also received uh, Amtrak's uh, Leadership Capabilities Award in 2022 and ADA's Norma Norma Miller Passionate Philanthropist Award in 2016. So we are amongst royalty here, everyone. So very happy to have you here. Um, I will tell you, um, uh, Judith holds a master's in public administration from Troy State University, a master's certificate in ITPM program management from George Washington University, a bachelor's in finance and math from Hood College, and a railway management program certificate from Eli Brog College of Business at Michigan State University, which I I need to find out what you did there. That sounds very interesting. Um, Judith is on many, many advisory boards, um, you know, from Disaster Services Corporation Board to Capital CIO Leadership um, and and a ton of others. The interesting one that I thought was also very interesting, she's on the Leadership Council for the Make-A-Wish Foundation in a mid in the mid Atlantic. So welcome, Judith. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you, Lisa. You're flattering me. Well, you, well you're easy to flatter. So, um, hey, you know, when you say Amtrak, people think trains and they think, yeah, we know what Amtrak does. But Judith, what do we not know about what maybe the average person may not know about what Amtrak does? Yeah, good question, because you're right. Hopefully folks know us as running trains. And uh, I know, especially here on the Northeast Corridor, a lot of folks take our Sella up and down the corridor to get to uh, different different destinations for work and, uh, <laughs> and leisure. Uh, we also go cross country. We actually have 500 stations around the country and we have cross country routes both on the North and the South. Um, but what you may not know is we also have a construction part of our business that's actually very active right now because we are refreshing a lot of our in- infrastructure. So we repair and build bridges, tunnels, um, various buildings, and of course, tracks. We also have our own police department. We have about 500 officers around the country and they have jurisdiction over both our trains and our stations. Mm-hmm. And we have uh, also a whole real estate department that helps manage the 500 or so um, facilities around the country that some of which we own, some of which we lease, and some of which we lease to others. So well, there's a lot of different elements to our business. We, we actually do a lot more than just run trains. Of course, running trains is the most important part. I had no idea that the police, the people in uniform that I see at the stations were Amtrak employees. 
Yep. That, that's so interesting. Yep. See, now we're, we're all a little bit smarter about Amtrak. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Oh. All right. It's time for our icebreaker. A little rapid fire. Are you ready, Judith? Sure. <laughs> you know the rules. So in case you don't, you, you to make one choice, not to make an explanation as to why you chose it. And then we're going to rapidly go to the next one. All right. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Salmon or steak? Salmon. Unix or Windows? Windows. Country or rock? Rock. Texting or calling? Texting. Chocolate or vanilla? Uh, chocolate. Mac or PC? Uh, PC. Dogs or cats? Cats. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Samsung or iPhone? iPhone. Fall back or spring forward? Whichever one gives me an extra hour. <laughs> Fall back. <laughs> Fall back. <laughs> <laughs> On-prem or in the cloud? Cloud. Smooth or chunky? Smooth. Mountain or ocean? Ocean. Chili with beans or without? Without. Xbox or PC? PC. Star Trek or Star Wars? I'm going to go Star Trek. Okay. As you may know, because I know you've seen the podcasts already, I'm going to let you explain Trek over Wars. Why did you pick Star Trek? Uh, probably just a little less fantasy, a little more reality, even though it's, you know, sci-fi, but... <laughs> Good. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. We all have our reasons. And, you know, inquiring minds want to know. They want to know what, what's in your brain about that. So as you know, let's get into the meat of, meat of uh, why we're here today. And that's digital transformation. And, and how do we as CIOs and technologists help organizations do what they do? Um, so, Judith, when you think about your role, especially your role, uh, and Amtrak's overall strategy, you know, how does transformation in your role work into that calculus? Uh, well, I think for Amtrak and, and other organizations, the important part is that the digital technology strategy is driven by the business strategy. So we're understanding what are the business goals and objectives. It starts with kind of top-down objectives. At Amtrak, we call it our strategic blueprint. So blueprint, have, okay. The blueprint, we have a five-year plan and we lay out strategic, what we call strategic actions. They're basically the big picture objectives and then everything should flow from there. So if, if our um, technology strategy and transformation initiatives aren't tied to one of those strategic actions, then we just really have to question, are we doing the right thing? Are we doing what the business needs? Are we you know, aligned with what the company needs to really move the needle? And, the direction um, that the blueprint kind of uh, points us. So for us, the our roadmap, our strategy, and you know our programs and projects are all um, intended to align with the bigger picture. Of course, you have some keep the lights on kind of things you have to do in your normal maintenance. You know those are all sort of table stakes, but the the real uh, game changers, the things that are going to move the needle, need to be aligned with where the business needs to go. I, when you're given that response, the thing that popped in my head, and I am curious, have you ever like got down part, partway through a road or initiative and realized, uh oh, this is not aligned with our roadmap or our blueprint? We have to pull the plug. I'm trying to think if there's any. I'm not at, thankfully not at Amtrak because I think we are well aligned. <laughs> That's um, good. Yeah, we're well aligned with the business, and yeah, you know, I've been there a little over four years. And one of the first things I did, and I, actually this is what I, I tend to do wherever I join, is first learn the business, because every job I've had, I've switched industries, and it's not intentionally, just worked out that way. So number one, had to learn the business, had to get to know the players, build those relationships with business partners. So that alignment to me is sort of 101. You know, you have to understand the business and make sure that the things that you're doing are in alignment. Um, and so thankfully, I think I've been pretty fortunate that the uh, technology didn't mean to put you on the spot, but yeah, it just pop, pop, popped in my head. Um, and, um, and, and one of the other elements that you brought up just leads me to think about, you know, how do you measure what you're doing then, you know, as you go along, you know, you know, tell me how you lead these from a leadership perspective, from, a, in, you know, measurements or KPIs, how, 
What do you do? You know, and that's challenge sometimes because you know, I think the big question you have to ask is what's the business objective that we're trying to accomplish and then how do we measure that? And I don't think that, that technology can do it in a vacuum. So we're actually going through an exercise now. We're shifting to something called OKRs, objectives mm -hmm. and results. So we're focused, you know, really on what is the business objective? What's the business value? And trying to quantify that and break it down into you know, things that are achievable within a reasonable time frame. So it's not necessarily this big, hairy three-year goal that we know, you know, we're not going to know until three years from now whether we achieved it, but try and break it down into milestones and achievable objectives that we can measure and that we can have these, you know, checkpoints along the way, because that's to get you to your point of, you know, did you realize maybe you were doing something that wasn't aligned with the objectives? Well, if we can define what the business value is and we can have these milestones that are within you know, months and not years, then we can say, hey, wait a minute, this initiative isn't accomplishing what we thought it would, maybe we should stop, you know? So I think sometimes it might bring to light some of those, uh, you know, make, make it really kind of question are we working on the right things. And so we're going through an exercise of really trying to fine tune those metrics and those objectives and really tie them specifically to business value and to the business goals so that we can see exactly how it's going to drive you know, trans transformative change for the business. And I like what you said at the very beginning on how you don't do it in a vacuum mm -hmm. um, and how you have your business partner partners and stakeholders at the table with you. Are they also with you as the metrics are being measured? And um, you know how, how does that represent, if they are, how does that mm -hmm. show up? What does that look like? Yeah, ideally, I wouldn't say they always have historically because I think we have sometimes done that in a vacuum and because a lot of times we're measuring scope, schedule and budget. So, you know, is the project on, on scope? Are we delivering what we said we would? Is it on time and did we meet our budget? But we're still not always saying, well, did it achieve the business value and the objective, right? So now that's what we're trying to shift to. And in order to do that, we have to have those conversations with the business partners. And, you know, and then those checkpoints along the way will be, okay, business partner, did we achieve, did we achieve that objective? So uh, I think it's a journey. Uh, this doesn't happen overnight. And as, as some of the folks who are coaching us through this have said, it's a muscle that you have to develop. And it's not an easy muscle uh, to, to measure things in a way that you can tie it directly to business value. So I think the business does have to be there in terms of setting those metrics and then helping, you know, do those check-ins to see are we actually achieving what we said we would. No, I like that. And I, and I, I think about that, um, you know, I, I call it two butts in the seat, but yes. having your, having your business partner there in, you know, owning the transformation with you. So it's not just shoveled over to it or, yep. and, and for you guys to handle it. And then it, then when it, they don't like it, they, or if it doesn't, if it's not exactly golden, then, you know, that, then it, it's it's project that fell down versus the organization's project. Have you, have you like, what do you do to combat that kind of, um, when you think of culture and it, to me, that reminds me of culture, right? So how does culture play a role and do you leverage it or, or enable it somehow to, to work towards what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, absolutely. And I like your two, two in the seat, two buns in the seat. Um, I, I think Scott even said, I do two in a box, you know, yeah. on your previous podcast. Um, uh, yeah. So I think that leader, that partnership starts at the top. You know, you have to have strong sp sponsorship from both sides, both the business and the technology side. And I think it's imperative that, you know, that ownership is together and the organization is seeing that joint accountability, the partnership, the ownership. Um, and that we, you know, we're going to succeed or we're going to fail together. So the, the relationships become really important. And when you think about, you were talking about the culture, I think just the, how do we embrace change and how do we get other people to embrace change and how do we show that this, um, this is not a technology project. And, and in fact, rather than saying it's a technology or project or a business project, you know, that it's a joint project together. But a lot of times we actually like to say it's a business project with technology as an enabler. So, you know, they, they have to be at the table and, you know, we, we need the, the sponsors, the person who's joined with me at the hip as say the executive sponsor, 
we, we need to be singing the same tune. We need to be selling the change. We need to explaining the why. You know, why are we doing this, and how's it going to impact? You know, the the end users, and if it's going to be a you know transformative change, then it doesn't come necessarily without some level of disruption. So we have to be able to get people to understand, you know, uh, the whys. And uh, you know, they talk about people talk about changing hearts and minds. So I think it's you know, why are we doing this? Yeah. Uh, and getting people on board and getting them into that um, process mindset, thought pattern of you know doing things the way we always have done them is going to end up resulting in the things we've always achieved. So you know it's time to kind of think differently. So I think that culture change starts at the top and it starts with that partnership and it um, you know kind of cascades through the organization by getting people to understand. You know why we're doing it, and uh, and that we're everybody's on board and everybody's aligned, and we're all kind of championing together. I love that, and you know what's going through my head is that it's like shared visibility, right? It, yeah. Yeah. You know whether you like you said starting from the top and then trickling down through the organization, but it's this shared message of of transformation versus an IT project. So um, yeah. very powerful, good stuff. Um, so what do you do in your organization to foster like innovation and, 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 and getting your group ready for these transformations, these innovate innovation, you know, something that changes that makes adds value, right? How do you, how do you do that with your teams? Well, I think part of it is, um, you know, getting the, because a lot of the ideas are coming from the people who are doing the process every day. So my team supports a lot of the business groups and uh, focuses on, you know, what are the transformative projects that are really going to either drive efficiency change or for us, a, a lot of it is around scalability and efficiency. So, um, you know, moving, moving from more, let's say manual processes, labor intensive processes to things that are more automated and then leveraging data and being able to use that for decision making and allow us to be more proactive. So I think a lot of it is getting people out of kind of their daily way of thinking and the daily um, you know, environment and getting into a place where we can do more collaboration and brainstorming together. And I also think it's just really important for us in IT to get out into the business and see what actually occurs day to day. So you might think, oh, running, you know, before I joined a train company, I had no idea what went into running trains. But when you get out and you see maintenance facilities and um, understand all the things that happen behind the scenes for customer service, and uh, just even uh, I got the opportunity to visit our um, test kitchen a few weeks ago. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> just to see all the meals that are on the trains and what it takes to put those menus together and to test out different things to see what's going to taste good after it's, you know, been on a train for um, some period of time and, you know, how do we prepare it and all that. And a lot more goes into that than you would ever think. So I think getting out of our seat and going out and seeing the business and the processes and really how things work and talking to people who do things every day and for them to hear questions from us who aren't exposed to it every day to say, well, why do you do that? Because you know, they're caught in their business world and doing things the way they've always done it. And then somebody else comes in and says, why, why do you do that? And, you know, we start to think about what's in the realm of the possible and how can we do things differently? So to me, it's that two-way exchange of, you know, I know my process is really well, but maybe I don't know or haven't thought about how I could be doing things differently, um, you know, as a business person. And then the technology people coming in and saying, well, I know technology, but I don't know your business. So let me look at it through a different lens. And then let's kind of collaborate and brainstorm together and see if we can come up with uh, a better or new way of doing things. So I think just promoting that and giving people space to think and promoting that innovative mindset and providing maybe the tools and the space and the structure to allow that to happen so that you, know, you can kind of co-create, is what I like to call it, co-create a new way of doing things. I love it two-way exchange, co-create, learning the business. I'm like writing down all these nuggets that I'm getting from you. Um, but I do want to like go back to one of the first things you said that, you know, you need to make sure that your organization learns the business. Yeah. And you, and you, and then it got me to thinking about, um, you know, we're transforming organizations, but what about your own organization? 
can you talk about like whether it's you know continuous learning or training or upskilling or even augmenting you know how does that come into play and how do you how do you what's your approach for ensuring you're bringing your team along yeah well i think there's a couple of different things I, I do put the ownership on the individuals so you know they have to own their own career and their own career development although we need to provide an environment and the resources to allow them to be able to grow and thrive and um, so we we uh, encourage all of our employees to spend at least 40 hours a year in some kind of development whether that's a conference or training or webinars um, but that's something that, you know, then they need, they need to find the time, they need to carve out the time and go find the opportunities. Um, but above and beyond that, we also provide different leadership development programs for those who are at the appropriate level and are looking for those opportunities. And then we also leverage our partners quite a bit. Some of the, um, some of the key technologies that we use, you know, those, those vendors have their annual conferences. So we, um, you know, we typically would support sending some of our key resources so they can have continuous learning. And uh, and then we also do some internal things where we are big users of LinkedIn learning. So we make those courses available to people. Um, we also have our own internal curriculum that uh, our training department puts together. And we're also on a journey to implement um, safe the scaled agile framework so from that we're providing a lot of training to our folks to learn what is that all about and, um, the, the skill sets that they need to be able to you know to, to kind of grow and develop and contribute with that new framework so a variety of different things but i think the big thing is that people have to own their own careers so they need to take the initiative um, and then we need to support that and provide the resources and you know give them the coaching and the development and the feedback and, uh, and make sure that we're allowing that growth to happen. Well, yeah, this has just been awesome, awesome because you're talking about innovation, not just for transformation, but also like how you even approach transformation, like bringing in safe, bringing in inno innovative new ways to, um, you know, actually do transformation as well. So not only at the person level, the business level, strategic level, but the level of the transformation as well, uh, that's fascinating. And uh, just a testament to your leadership that you're you're touching it at all these different levels. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, hey, so we can't always do it in a vacuum, right? Um, do you lever leverage collaboration or partnerships with you know anyone outside of Amtrak you, you, or even within Amtrak, but it might be like, totally unusual as from an organization to organization, you know, can you talk a little bit about the role of collaboration and partnership for, um, you know, your organization and how you get done what you need to get done? Yeah, I think you're right about, so let's, I'm gonna talk about internal and external. So internally uh, kind of goes back to the, the, there's a lot of collaboration between teams. So we have, um, you know, we have a service owner organization where we have service owners that are aligned with different parts of the business and they're really responsible for delivering a lot of these key initiatives. Uh, and then we have the um, actually fairly newly formed product management organization that's looking at kind of how do we define products and how do we, uh, what's the evolution of our, our products. And in this case, we're not selling a product to the market. It's more like what are the internal products that, um, that really drive that business alignment and that are helping with our, our, um, you know, our service delivery. Um, and then, of course, architecture and, uh, and and the role that they play. So I kind of actually look at the architecture team, the service owners who are delivering the, the service to the business, um, and then our, our products management team working very collaboratively together and then with the business to really figure out what's that alignment between technology and business. And then also, how do we deliver these initiatives? Because we can't, all those groups have to be at the table for this to be successful. Um, externally, the partnerships, and, and um, I won't name any vendors, but we definitely have some, some large key partnerships and we have what we call platform technologies. So these are core technologies that we've decided are really strategic to how we're going to deliver our, our IT services to the business. And so we've invested in those platforms. We invest in making sure our resources are trained on those platforms. And then we form strong partnerships with those vendors so that we have um, 
you know, kind of continuous innovation. And we know where their roadmaps are going, so we can kind of plan our roadmaps around that. You know, where is this product set going? And, uh, and, and that can also contribute to how we can bring more value to the business. So I think establishing those key partnerships is really important, obviously both internally and externally. Uh, Cause you're right, we can't succeed together. And without those key partnerships, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to be successful. So absolutely important. Great answer, great answer. Um, you know, I am sure there's something you said at the very beginning and when we were doing your introduction, I am sure people are curious. I know I'm curious. How does one go from science, being the head of IT for science-based organizations to railroads? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I did mention earlier, I, it wasn't intentional. I just happened to change careers multiple times. So I started in defense as a civilian, mm -hmm. Department of Defense. Uh, then I went to consulting, then life sciences and biotech, and then uh, were, um, sand mining, mining and minerals, and now uh, now transportation and rails. So I think uh, I don't know um, how does one do it. I think it's just uh, I'm 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 really about process and figuring out how technology can be leveraged to drive the needle for the business. Um, more so than I am about aligning with a specific industry. But I think what I found is that there are things from each of those organizations that I was able to leverage as I move from one to the next and commonalities you wouldn't expect between the different industries. So, but I think the big thing is that process mindset and just thinking about whatever organization I'm in, let's figure out how it operates, let's get out and learn the business, let's figure out how we can connect dots to help really drive that business value. And so I kind of consider myself a little bit of a dot connector you know, coming in and uh, and just like that. I'm like a sponge. I'm just going to absorb everything I can learn <laughs> about the business and then uh, kind of partner with the, the business leadership and try and figure out how we can, you know, bring bring value through technology. But it makes makes for an interesting career because I've had you know exposure to different uh, industries. And for me, that's kind of fun. I get to learn something new every time I, I move. Um, but I also have this kind of common thread throughout all of them that I can used to kind of learn and do things a little differently, a little better each time. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, this is wonderful advice and I'm going to ask you specifically about some advice here in a minute, but, um, you know, the, what I heard was, you know, you approach it, you have this formula that you use, um, that's has similar ele elements deconstructing the process, figuring out what's going on, learning the business, having that curiosity, um, that drives you to, you know, getting to where you need to be to be effective quickly. Um, but you've got your eye on, and for you, the eye on your prize, you, you said several times was, you know, process and, and using that as an anchor for you as you, as you move from, you know, one new environment to a, another new, whether it's internal new environment or new challenge or, or ex external, like your, your North star, if you will. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's what... Technology changes so fast, you know, and it's hard to keep up with all the different technologies, especially as you become, you know, more established in leadership roles. Um, so to me, just, you know, I, I rely on the tech experts to be tech experts <laughs> and kind of stick to what I know really well, which is, you know, how can I partner with the business and how can I look at things from a tech, from a, a lens that brings technology as an enabler to improve business process. So I think it works in really uh, any industry or any organization. I love it. I love it. So Judith, you're at a coffee shop, not to be named, and you have r really quick rapid fire coffee or tea. Tea. You have your tea and you're sitting at the coffee shop um, with a, a 22 year old Judith and you're looking at her and you're about to give her, you have five minutes to give her advice, you know, to set her off on her career. What would you tell the 22 year old Judith? I would say um, start networking. Cause I think what I have found is that my network and you talked about partnerships and collaboration, you don't go it alone. I talked about some of the things with the business and vendors, but I have to tell you, and you know this from Capital CIO and from other organizations we belong to that, um, you know, if, if having that support system, having people you can call, just even making connections. I will tell you, and I, we won't do it now because it'll take too long, but 
most of those career moves happened to be because of, of people that I knew or, um, you know, re recommendations or referrals. And that's, that's sort of how I think that a uh, successful career works is you don't do it by yourself. You really have this network, your board of directors, your, um, your support system that helps you navigate or when you have a challenge and you don't know the answer, somebody you can phone a friend and get the answer or at least get some thoughts and ideas to get your wheels turning. So I would say start building that network as soon as possible. It's never too late uh, for those who are more established in their career. I would also say um, don't turn down an opportunity. I've had a couple mm. finding moments in my career where I had to make some decisions around whether to um, you know, accept an opportunity that maybe had some downsides because it was a longer commute or maybe wouldn't have the same work-life balance or you know, maybe I was jumping into something I didn't know very well, so I'm getting out of my comfort zone. But I think just say yes, uh, you know, don't turn down the opportunities, take a chance, take a risk. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. So kind of getting back to that networking piece. I think when we don't know something, it's okay to reach out and, and ask for help. So find a good mentor or several um, to, to kind of help on your career path. And then just keep an open mind. I, I think I um, my career was not as intentional as I would love to say it was. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, some of it just happened, um, right place, right time. And, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's all worked out, but part of it's just because I kind of went with the flow. So I think just keep an open mind and be open to new opportunities, new experiences, and, um, and maybe take a little chance here or there. I, I probably didn't take as many risks as, you know, I would do if I was to start all over again. It was a little, a little risk averse one to make sure I knew all the answers before I dipped my toe in the water. But I think in hindsight, you know, maybe I was a little too cautious sometimes. So, um, and I'll add one, one last one, cause you said it, and I love this word is be curious. I think, uh, I ask a lot of whys and part of it's, I just want to learn and part of it is I want other people to think. So it's, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, I, don't be afraid to ask, but, uh, just re remain curious. I love it. I love it. You know, ask a lot of whys, network, um, you know, go ahead and, and take the risk and, um, you know, don't be too afraid. Um, you know, you don't have to have all the answers, just wonderful words of wisdom. I cannot thank you enough, Judith, for spending your time today and for sharing all that you've learned and, and helping us learn more about Amtrak and and again, this year, our transformation journey on, you know, how, how do we, we're all going through it. So how do we do it the best way? So I, again, thank you so much uh, for spending time with us today. And I really appreciated, you know, all that you gave to, to us today. So thanks. Thank you, Lisa. And I, I'm so excited for you doing this podcast. It's been really awesome to talk to you. So thank you for having me. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time.